And it's time once again for another edition of Lakers 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. The fact that you sleep with a man the first or second date does not preclude a future relationship. No, it exactly. doesn't, but you're taking your chances. No, but, but you're, you're your always. Chances. Oh, I see. Well, no, that's a different story. That's chances. a different story. When it comes to emotional importance, then it makes no difference whether it happens the first night, the second night, the third night. It really doesn't. Two men. Of course not. The point is this. A man has an absolutely phony relationship with you before he goes into the sacrament. While you're sitting there talking about your cat Fluffy and your last boyfriend and how he treated you and how nasty your boss is, we're sitting there thinking how you look naked. Right. <laughs> That's what we're thinking about. So we don't hear a word you say until we've had you. That's so what is the point of dating in the first place? It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. And more importantly, it teaches women how men think. I am your professor. Class meets at this time every week. We get together and we discuss issues of relationships, dating, sex, and most importantly, how to get sex without spending money. How to avoid marriage. I'm a licensed interpreter. I can interpret women into English. Women speak in code. I know what it all means. I will be happy to tell you. This is a, a correspondence school of sorts, so uh, the professor gets a lot of mail. Carrie writes in, says, Tom, Tom, Tom. Where to begin? I am a huge fan, as is the guy I've been seeing for about three weeks. He's got you really down pat. Anyway, I am 5'11", blonde hair, blue eyes, great rack, and graduate level education. I am 28, and the guy I've been seeing is 35. Every time we've gone out, I've split the bill with him. And we consummated the relationship on the first night. Hurrah! At first, I thought I just wanted to have someone to hang out with and have lots of great sex, but I'm starting to really like him. He's not as stupid as I originally believed. He's actually sweet and attentive. But here's the deal. He is a convicted felon. He served time in 89 and 90 for possession of intent. Possession with intent. Uh, I imagine that means drugs. He's got two kids, I've got none, and an ex-wife that is way too close geographically. Sexually, he's unbelievable. But I'm worried that there is not real potential here for anything more. That was good in the beginning because my life is extremely busy and relationships are too effing hard. I didn't say effing. But he's growing on me, Tom, and he thinks you are a god. Any advice for me? Should I hide and watch and see what happens or get while the getting is good? I've only dated suits of the past. I am a straight and narrow Catholic girl. <laughs> There's someone who likes a good crack in the ass, huh? Thank you, Jesus! Uh, and now she's found herself blown away by this bad boy on a motorcycle. Help! Your number one fan, Carrie. Carrie, sounds like a lot of baggage there. And uh, he's a bad boy. Uh, better to bang him. And if you can't bang him without falling in love with him, stop banging him. I know that's not what you wanted to hear, but I believe it's true. That's a hard one. Kids, ex-wife, convicted felon, although it was 11 years ago. I say, uh, just bang him or get up. Do not get involved with a guy like that. I'm going to change him. You know that's going on there. You know. Mike in Simi Valley writes in and says, Hello, Tom. I need help from the master. I am currently living with a woman that is driving me nuts. We had a great relationship. Keyword, had. Now I can't stand her. I would leave, but we do have some bills together. Damn, I wish I knew of like us 101 three years ago. I feel that I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. Actually, a blimp at a hard place. Oh, boy. 
I can't afford to move out, but staying here isn't working either. Whenever I get the chance to move out, another problem comes up. I'm not paid for overtime or car problems, etc. Help me. Well, if you have bills together and you're afraid she won't pay, I would say, uh, first of all, while you're living there, cut down on all unnecessary spending and put every penny towards the bill. That means when she wants to go out, tell her you can't afford to go out. you got to pay the bills. Do not incur any new bills. Cut up all the credit cards. Do not take out any more loans. Do not make any more debts. And for God's sake, do not impregnate her. This sounds like a situation ripe for someone getting knocked up. Don't forget to wear the old raincoat. You know what I'm saying? I say get the bills paid while you're there because once you're gone, you have no chance of getting her to help you pay. Women think that's your responsibility. Remember that. They think it's your responsibility. If you leave and there are debts, she will make you pay them. My guess is all the debts are on your credit cards, aren't they, Mark? Not hers, yours. So I say um, get the bills paid. Have your game plan to get out. Got it? Here's another one. Dear Tom, is father of two girls. I need a way to explain like it's 101 to my daughters. So if you can please help me, do so. Well, uh, first of all, I don't know how old your girls are. But I think that uh, young girls could benefit from knowing like it's 101. It's uh, to a young girl's benefit, especially one who is embarking on dating at 12, 13, whatever. It is important for a girl to know what guys are like. And especially when you are 13 and dating, a guy is going to say whatever he has to do to get sex. And uh, being that's the new millennium, I really do believe that uh, you have to speak very frankly and graphically about sex with a 13-year-old daughter. Believe me, it's the era of Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera. And I'm telling you, young girls are very sexualized. They know about sex. And uh, too many parents beat around the bush about it. I think you really have to tell your daughters point blank what guys are going to do, what guys want, how they plan to get sex. You also have to let them know that, and they already know it, but you have to let them know that you know that you can't control them. But that getting pregnant will ruin their lives. It will ruin their futures. And if they're going to go ahead and have sex, not only to use birth control, but to remember that getting pregnant is not an option. It's not. And that you're not going to help support their kids and you're not going to babysit their children. I really think you have to be that frank with young girls. Bottom line. So I do believe that you do need to explain like this one-on-one to your daughter. Absolutely. Hello, Tom, says the next letter. I've been listening to your show ever since you came on in L.A. I really enjoy it. I recently ended a long relationship with a girl and find myself single again. I have heard you do shows on why not to date single moms, but how about single dads? I have an 11-year-old daughter who lives with me full time. The mother is out of the picture and she hasn't been around in over five years. I would like to know what women think about this situation. If this is a good enough topic for a segment, I'd be happy to call in, etc., Mike, Mike, uh, I do think that women uh, have less problem with men who have kids than women who have kids, than men do it with women who have kids. But here's the deal. Your best shot with a woman is with a woman who has kids. And by the way, use a rubber or get snipped, okay? You don't want to create any more kids. Got it? I guarantee you that women who have a child will love the fact that you have a child. They will love it. But that's your uh, most direct avenue to getting laid, I'll tell you right now. But uh, the other thing is, uh, hey, try not to get into a permanent relationship. You know what I'm saying? Let your daughter grow up a little more. Bottom line. If you have a question for the professor, the professor is here to help.